Okay, this presentation is to review some grade 11 magnetism so that we can move on into our grade 12 concepts. The first few slides I'm just going to rush through because you can stop at any time and read them on your own accord. The whole purpose of this is for you to review quickly and to be comfortable with your grade 11 magnetism and your right hand rules. So you can read these first few slides on your own time, but I'm just going to quickly run through them. You do need to be very aware of the three different fields that we're going to be discussing in this course, gravitational, electrical, and magnetic. Let's just run through these slides very quickly. Again, you can stop and read them on your own. This one I'm stopping at. You need to realize that magnetic field lines are drawn outside the magnet from north to south pole. Okay, compasses. You also need to realize that if I was to place a compass near a bar magnet, it will always point to the south pole. We call the compasses south seeking. And that's what these two little pictures represent. You can see in that horseshoe magnet, the compass is pointing, the red side is pointing to the south. This is an interesting little fact that Earth's geographic poles are actually opposite to its magnetic poles. If you look at our magnetic field lines there, they are pointing to the geographic north. And we know that magnetic field lines are south seeking. Okay, so let's get to our right hand rules. Orsted, he was the scientist who discovered that whenever an electric current moves through a conductor, there's a magnetic field in the region around the conductor. And the magnetic, the symbol that we use for magnetic field is this beta, big B with a vector sign over it because it does have a direction. So then they needed some way to determine the direction. So they came up with the right hand rules. So for a straight conductor, that means when current is going through a straight wire or straight conductor, then we use right hand rule number one, where our thumb points in the direction of conventional current flow opposite to electron flow. And then our curled fingers represent the circles of the magnetic field lines. So here's just a few examples that you can look at. And you obviously need to have a convention to determine in and out of the page. So this dot represents field lines or current coming out of the page. If we show you an X, it means that current is going into the page, or if we're actually talking about magnetic field lines in a case, then at that point in space, it would show that the magnetic field lines are going into the page. So here's some examples you can try on your own. I'll whip through them very quickly so that you can stop at any time you want and look at them. But I want to now get on to right hand rule number two. So if we now have our current running through a coiled conductor, which is often called a solenoid, and we do this to try and strengthen the magnetic field. If we coil our conductor, we usually get a stronger magnetic field. So here's a picture of how we do our directions. If our current is coiled, we now use our fingers to represent the conventional current flow since they can wrap and curl around the solenoid. And then our thumb points north. Okay, so make sure you're very comfortable with right hand rule number two. And there was one more right-hand rule. 
And this rule is used for when we're talking about magnetic force. So when do we get a magnetic force? Well, you only get a magnetic force if you have two or more magnetic fields interacting. If I just had one magnetic field, there would be no force. Okay, I would have a magnet, but there would actually be no force. It's not until I bring another magnet close to it that I'm either going to get that force of attraction or force of repulsion. So, how do we determine the direction of the force? Well, we use right-hand rule number three. And here's a little picture of how we set it up. You're going to learn that really right-hand rule number three is used for something called cross-product, but we'll talk about that later in class. So, if I had a mag uh, two magnetic fields here interacting, I can see that the magnetic field lines would run from the north to the south pole, south seeking. So that will become my fingers. If my current was going up, conventional current, then I would put my thumb up. And then my palm of my hand would depict the direction of the magnetic force, which in this case would be out of the page. Right. Here's another picture. This one shows it clearly. You've got your direction of your fingers south seeking, your thumb pointing in the current, and there's your right hand. The force is coming out at us. This is actually another way that some people like to do their right hand rule number three. And it also works if you're more comfortable with the, this, then you can also use this one, okay? Thumb is the uh, conventional current. Your finger, forefinger is the magnetic field, south seeking, and then your middle finger is the direction of the magnetic force. So that's a quick review of your right hand rules. So come to Monday with the online quiz done and this review completed.